Waver Velvet. Waver Velvet, Weba Barabeto, is the master of rider in the Fourth Holy Grail War of Fate Slash Zero. Initially a student in the Clock Tower under the tutelage of Kenneth El Meloy Archibald before the Holy Grail War, he later attains the position of Lord after being taken in by the El Meloy faction, referred to as Lord El Meloy II, Rodo Irumaroi Nisei. Highly respected within the Clock Tower, he is the Lord of the Department of Modern Magecraft Theory and owns the El Meloy Classroom. He is a supporting protagonist of Fate Slash Zero, and the main protagonist of Lord El Meloy 2 Case Files and the Adventures of Lord El Meloy 2. Waver was born as the third generation of the Velvet family, but it was not a very prestigious line. His grandmother, the first generation, was the lover of a certain Magus who picked up the very basics of Magecraft during their pillow talk. Waver's mother, the second generation, only sparsely practiced as a way to honor her mother. Waver was the first to seriously follow the path of Magecraft, so his heritage and innate abilities were lacking. His mother found the association's hierarchical system annoying and disapproved of Waver seeking out the tutelage of a proper mentor, but he was strongly drawn to Magecraft. His parents eventually both died of illness, so he took the opportunity to sell all of his family's possessions to gather enough money for his tuition for the clock tower without anything left over. Becoming Lord El Meloy II. Three years after the events of the Fourth Holy Grail War, he returns to the clock tower and displays diligence after having been changed by his interactions with Ryder. He became a third-year lecturer while studying the bare essentials, he had no choice but to rely on others due to his own fundamental lack of ability. As a lecturer for third-year students, he quickly made a name for himself. At first, he wasn't even placed into a specific faculty, so his lectures had an astonishingly small number of attendees. Thanks to this, however, the lessons had a practicality to them that was unrivaled elsewhere in the clock tower, and the new generations of students with nowhere else to go flocked to him. Winning the approval of other lecturers that had failed in their struggles for power, he was able to take the stage and actualize a multilateral approach to education that had yet to be seen. Kanatha's sudden death leaves a gap the organization of his research left at the clock tower, and House El Meloy is left on the verge of ruin. While still considered Kanatha's most useless formal student, Waver collects the unorganized and unattended works before they are lost, compiling them into the tome named Lord Kanatha's Encyclopedia of Arcane Secrets. His actions restore the El Meloy house, and he become known as the man who revived the Archibalds, or New El Meloy. The encyclopedia becomes what acts as the foundation for the flourishing of the house and its descendants. I recognize your deeds to the Archibald family, but since you were only making up for what you caused in the first place, you better serve me for your entire life. Rainus El Meloy Archizort, 10th head of the Archibald family. Waver takes on the title of Lord El Meloy II, after the proper heir, Rainus El Meloy Archizort a young girl at the bottom of the family's hierarchy, recognizes his achievements, but only does so while letting him know that Kanatha's death was his fault and that he will have to serve her for his entire life. He was the youngest lord the clock tower had ever seen. Amongst the twelve nobles who administer the clock tower, he's the lowest ranked. He attains the fourth order rank, phase, due to how good of a teacher he was, though if judged solely on his own abilities he would be the lower rank of count. He was previously in charge of the mineralogy department until he changed to the 12th Modern Magecraft Theories department. The majority of people thought he wasn't anyone special. It was assumed that he was a mere puppet the El Meloy family had, at their convenience, forced into the unenviable position of heading that hodgepodge of subjects known as modern magical studies. But, they soon learned that they were terribly wrong. His works eventually cause him to be recognized as a great professor. Within the Clock Tower political party, Lord El Meloy II is in the flexible reformist camp. He is the type to respect one's merits, regardless of tradition or novelty. Rather than labeling him a conservative or a reformer, it might be most accurate to call him a neutral party. He wishes to further his own studies, but his mediocrity as a magus keeps him from advancing. He attains a reputation as a great teacher but cares little for it due to not even being able to advance in rank within the Clock Tower. Appearance in the Fourth Holy Grail War, Waver was 19 years old. Although he was a bit shorter than an average person. His body tended to be frail, because he had done nothing but study magic during his childhood, and had little time to forge his body, but he didn't think it was a weakness. Rather, Waver had pride in polishing up his intellect. As Lord El Meloy II, he is a man in his early thirties with long loose hair. He wore a red coat with golden ornamentations on its shoulders, and his face bore a tremendously sour expression. He is often seen smoking a cigar. In character material, he is seen wearing an elbow sleeve shirt with admirable Great Tactics logo on it. As an adult he bears a heavy resemblance to Yumin's, 
one of Iskandar's generals. Personality. Fourth Holy Grail War. Waver is often called a spoiled brat who is the very embodiment of a narcissist that does not doubt he's a genius. He displays traits of cowardice, being short-tempered, and constant complaints without action. He has an inferiority complex about his abilities as a magus and master, and he constantly doubts himself at every turn. He forms a bond with Ryder over time that begins to change him, with Ryder bolstering his confidence and recognizing his traits. He praises Waver for riding into the front lines of the battle with him, he comforts Waver upon seeing Castor's victims, and remarks in his abilities as an unconventional but exceptionally talented magus, though Waver quickly refutes him. Though he often fights with Ryder, he bonds with him over the course of the Holy Grail War, and he even pledges his allegiance to Ryder as one of his subjects. Even Gilgamesh praises his loyalty, sparing his life because of remaining steadfast in following Ryder's final orders. Lord Elmeloy II After becoming Lord Elmeloy II, he takes on a reputation as a famous lecturer of the clock tower. His involvement with Ryder changed his attitude, allowing his persistent effort to lead to him being called a professor. Known as Great Big Ben London Star, Professor Charisma, and Master V. He has been even named the number one man female students would like to sleep with, among others. He cares little about his reputation, and he would rather focus on his own success as a magus. His irritations towards it have even caused people to say that he has haunted the school with a constantly cranky look to him for several years. He is not an ambitious person, and he does not like to become personally involved with his students, having once said, what a load of codswallop. Why should I, stuck at the fourth tier I still be, have to bloody look after other people? He dislikes people calling him Lord Elmeloy without the second because it is unbearably grating without it. In his mystery solving Lord Elmeloy too focuses on the why done it, the motive of the perpetrator, instead of who done it, who the perpetrator is, or how done it, how the crime was committed. He states that this is because, due to magecraft being involved, a crime can be committed any number of ways even by the dead, and so trying to figure out who or how is pointless. He takes after Ryder in that his sole pleasure lies in Japanese video games, often called visual novels, though he has come to hate Japan and its people. He orders large batches of these games, and after playing through them fully, takes the time to diligently give detailed reviews on the games through their survey cards. Though he often receives game memorabilia through sweepstakes, he cares little for it and mostly believes that it is the proper action to relay his opinions back to the game designers even if he must pay international postage to airmail them to Japan. Much of his room is full of the memorabilia, though he also has a cabinet where he keeps the remaining piece of Ryder's cloak that he used as his catalyst. He hates his apprentice Grey's face due to her identical appearance to Saber who almost killed him in the Fourth Holy Grail War, and has her wear a hood to hide it. However, the truth is that while he was initially frightened upon seeing her, his continued hatred for her face is at Grey's own request. When Grey agreed to become Lord Elmeloy II's apprentice she asked of him, please, keep hating my face. In the anime adaptations, he holds no such contempt for Japan or its people and even holds many in respect, such as Kairi Sisigu and Rin Tosaka, while also yearning to witness the Holy Grail Wars again. Abilities Waver's poor lineage gave him a magic circuit count and magic crest quality of the lowest standard. The Velvet Crest is a simple square, lacking history as a Magi family. It is still only a vessel, which Waver and his descendants must fill. The crest is removed from his body upon becoming Lord Elmeloy II, held as collateral until his debt is repaid. He lacks the prerequisites to actually practice magecraft, and he cannot even provide the cost of Ryder's Ionioi Hitairoi, causing Ryder to bear the cost himself to keep from draining and killing his master. If Kaneth has 3000 MP, Waver has a paltry 5 MP. He improves his ability enough over time that he has no trouble declaring that he is a powerful Archmagus as of becoming titled Lord Elmeloy II, but his skills as a Magus are still hopelessly average. He is capable of hypnotic suggestion to a certain degree. It allows him to make Glenn and Martha Mackenzie believe him to be their grandson for a long duration of time, but it is lacking in that it fails to affect Glenn for the entirety of Waver's stay. He believes he has completely failed in what should be the most basic art among basic arts and has no excuse even if it was by luck or accident that he broke free from it. As Lord Elmeloy II he carries a case of cigars that are actually a type of mystic code. There are many varieties of cigars to use for different sorts of magecraft, such as defense, setting up bounded fields, stabilizing the mind, and activating magic circuits. The reason he chose cigars for his mystic codes is because when he was forced into the position of Elmeloy II he panicked and wanted something to make him seem more lordlike. His element is earth. Observation. Even at 19, Waver possesses the power of observation and insight that gives him remarkable talent as a researcher. 
he could have insisted that Magecraft is a subculture and taken the world by storm after starting a business as a critic, but he would have been quickly obliterated by the association. His inborn talents instead take another form later in life. As Lord Elmeloy II, he could be called an investigator of Magecraft. However, Luvia Gelida Edelfelt and Kaneth said that by understanding Magecraft, all he is doing is destroying it. For example, he only witnessed Luvia's gander once and he easily deciphered Edelfelt's Magecraft. He is notorious in the clock tower for using his talents of analysis to copy and change the research of other magi, then file patents on it under his own name for profit. Tutorage. His true talent is realized as a lecturer due to being the best person at detecting the hidden talent of others and training it, described as the unusual talent of could not put magecraft to practice, but ingenious in the reinterpretation of theories and classification of systems. It can be said in comparison to running that he could never be an athlete because his leg strength is among the absolute worst, but his talents can shine as a coach because he can imagine the perfect running form. He doesn't take many students, but all of his graduates have achieved no less than the rank of brand and pride within a decade, without exception. It is said they could change the entire internal power structure of the clock tower if they were to gather under him. His works as a talent production are regarded as the greatest masterpieces of their time, but he doesn't really care because he is more focused on becoming a successful magus himself. A testament to his teaching skill is the student, Flat Escardos who was infamous in the institution. Flat was seen as a raw gem that outshined the polished gems of other instructors given that his boundless talent and skills were always proven and never improved upon by any professor. However under the tutelage of Waver, Flat's talents managed to improve and develop to the point where he surpassed all other students which is a result that other professors could not perform with their students. He may well be the greatest instructor in the clock tower. And he doesn't even crush his pupils as Kister Zelrich Schweinord does. Alchemy Waver can do basic alchemy using tools brought from London, including 24 vials for ores and reagents, a spirit lamp mortar, and droppers. Using a basic practice of mixing complementary reagents into river water from the Mayan River, he can detect residual magical energy, and doing so on various samples collected from parts of the river can be used to trace a target. Water with latent magecraft turns a rusty red color, water with strong traces turns a murky black, and normal water is unaffected. This allows him to pinpoint the layer of caster using the specifically labeled samples in the map to find where the traces are strongest and when normal water ends. He follows the idea that the water element is the first step that should be taken when tracking magi because it always follows the absolute principle of being something that flows from a higher place to a lower place. Tasks like calculating the wind's direction and reading the earth's pulse are more difficult than finding the lowest flow of the water pulse, especially in an area with rivers like Fuyuki. He dislikes such methods and instead wishes for a true magecraft contest, instead of milling about like a forensic investigator. Ryder praises him for obtaining great results from a poor method over a better method, but Waver perceives it as an insult. As Lord Elmeloy too, he uses alchemy for his forensic investigation. In the Adra Castle case, he was investigating upon the death of Hishiri Adashino. He takes out a vial of some sort of liquid from his jacket. With one drop of that liquid, the color of the bloodstain changed dramatically. By analyzing the concentration of magical energy remaining in the bloodstains, he can determine when Hishiri died. Orlok commented that rather than science, his method was more like medieval-era alchemy or a form of witchcraft. Orlok believes his methods are too direct, and it's getting farther away from the mystery. Lord Elmeloy too replied that he tried numerous methods, but this is the best method for him. Volumen Hydrargerum. Trimau, Torimomo, is a maid golem currently serving Rhaenys Elmeloy Archizort. She was formerly the mystic code of Caneth Elmeloy Archibald, Volumen Hydrargerum, before being inherited and reworked by Rhaenys under the guidance of Lord Elmeloy II. Upon succeeding the Elmeloy title, he inherits Caneth's mystic code, Volumen Hydrargerum, and Rhaenys working under Waver's guidance is able to improve its functions by modifying it into a kind of humanoid automaton, made golem, Mido Gorimu, that is similar to the liquid metal terminator. While it normally does chores, it seems there is a troublesome bug that causes it to run out of control while insisting that it is a killer robot from the future. This may be because of a harmful movie it was shown during its developmental stages. She currently acts as the maid of Rhaenys. If you like this content, don't forget to like and subscribe. See you later, bye bye.